Welcome and good Friday evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday, which also, by the way, calendar-wise, puts us just a, about a weekend away from being halfway through October already. Folks, that just leaves, obviously, but painfully, two months left in this year. Uh, the lingering summer weather uh, certainly, I think, has had a lasting effect on our minds. And we've even got 85 degrees for daytime highs, 80 and 85 degrees for daytime highs in a couple of days in your forecast period. However, there, there is a but to all of that. Uh, we do have a slight chance of some showers due to that upper level, upper level disturbance tonight. We've got high pressure giving us all that nice warm air. But we've got some temperatures that will really uh, feel much more like late fall later on in your forecast. Some big changes, uh, I do believe, are on the way. Headlines tonight on the local level will include the latest on the bus monitor in the McGoffin County school system, the latest school system employee to be involved in some sort of activity involving a minor and sexual activity or intent to some degree uh, or something of an unlawful transaction we also need to include as well. And we'll also have an update on another case that's already pending in the McGoffin County court system. And I got to go visit our friend Randy Reisner at the Logan Corporation today. As was promised, they started moving in early this week. I caught some big trucks rolling in and I learned something really cool about another side of their business that excites me uh, about a new service that we'll have here in our area and in the region. Uh, it's a big part of their business, too, and I'm really looking forward to telling you just a bit about that. And some other news and information. McGough County Hornets, of course, uh, on an off week this week, but uh, Johnson Central Golden Eagles and the Paintsville Tigers looking to continue to roll right on and go undefeated, so indeed some high school football taking place. Before we get to those and other reports this evening, a federal grand jury has officially indicted a man from Cincinnati and a man from Moorhead with distributing carfentanil that resulted in multiple overdoses, seven overdoses, in Rowan County alone. Just yesterday, 28-year-old Travis Clark of Cincinnati and 27-year-old Matthew Bowman of Moorhead were both indicted for one count each of conspiring to distribute carfentanil, which is a fentanyl analog and distribution of carfentanil resulting in serious bodily injury. The drug is an extremely powerful synthetic opioid, 10,000 times more potent than morphine and 100 more times potent than fentanyl, which is, is itself 50 times more potent than heroin. Carfentanil is a controlled substance typically used as a tranquilizing agent for elephants and other large animals. But recently, the Drug Enforcement Administration issued a warning to the general public and the law enforcement personnel nationwide about the health and safety risks associated with the drug being used to cut heroin uh, for the most part. According to the indictment on September the 7th and 8th, as was reported nationwide, these two men, they say, were the ones uh, le who illegally distributed carfentanil that resulted in those seven drug overdoses. And an overdose charge carries a minimum of 20 years up to life in prison upon conviction. The conspiracy charge carries a minimum of five years and up to 40 years in prison. Just last evening, just as we were wrapping up the program, we had only a few details of an accident that was reported in McGoffin County after a series of auto accidents that took place yesterday. This was an ATV accident. We have some details tonight to indicate that the man was taken to the Pikeville Medical Center. He would have been airlifted for traumatic injuries that he sustained, but the weather permitted. From what we understand, a gentleman uh, getting ready to go or just returning, I believe, going hunting in the Helton Branch area, encountered a slick log on his ATV and he flipped the machine and it caused traumatic injury to one of his leg. It also, from what I understand, re-injured some prior serious injuries uh, that he had. All three medical services, which air medical services, which served McGoffin County, had to decline uh, life flight because of the low ceiling and they were unable to fly to the area due to the weather conditions. And that was what enabled Transtar to get permission to transport him, uh, bypassing the Pauby Hall Medical Center and on to the Pipeville Medical Center, which is a level true level two trauma center. Uh, but from what we understand, he did sustain several broken bones and some other serious injuries. Well, it, it wasn't tobacco he was chewing, but something else. The Johnson County Sheriff's Department says sometime this morning around 4:30, they got a call of a single vehicle accident on Laurel Creek Road in Flat Gap. Brad Caldwell, a deputy, responded, and what he found upon his arrival was a single vehicle that the driver of which had lost control on Laurel Creek Road. The vehicle had plunged over an embankment some 300 feet, came to rest in a creek. The operator of the vehicle was identified as 52-year-old Robert Burchett of Pressensburg, who had a leafy green substance in his mouth that was determined to be marijuana that Burchett says that he often chews 
like tobacco. He also stated that he had been consuming what he called red liquor. Uh, Birch had sustained some injuries in the accident, was taken to the hospital, and then sided uh, with operating a motor vehicle under the influence of alcohol and or drugs, and also assisting at the scene we want to mention was the Red Bush Fire Department and firemen from the Flat Gap Department as well. Here's what we know at this hour. It's been an ongoing case all week since the arrest and more details available this evening on yet another McGoffin County School System employee arrested for some sort of inappropriate contact with a student. It's the third such report in that nature that we have covered in the past several months. This time it involves a young bus monitor who been employed with the school system for the past couple of years. In this case, a 20-year-old bus monitor Dennis J. Bays jailed after being accused of touching and sending several obscene and sexually explicit messages or images to a student from a time frame of at least September the 1st through October the 7th. In an interview with the Kentucky State Police, specifically Trooper Ryan Hale, the victim, the student, says that Bays exposed his genitals to her on several different occasions and that he would often sit next to her on the bus and that he often would slide his hand up her thigh in an attempt to try to put his hand between her legs. McGoffin County School Superintendent Scott Helton says that the parent of the child found the messages on her electronic device and called him directly. She went ahead and explained and uh, after that uh, I made a call to uh, uh, one of the secretaries here to ask the young man to get to get the young man on the phone and have him meet with me Monday morning because we were out of school again on this past Monday because there was no school for the fall break. So I had a meeting set up at 9 o'clock that morning and uh, I met with the young man, uh, did a quick overall investigation of what took place and after uh, the interview, I determined that there was enough for me to go ahead and terminate his employment. Once I talked with him, I found out that there was some inappropriate stuff that went on on the bus as far as touching. And then there was some, some uh, stuff that was sent through social media to the, from him to the young person. And um, I found it deemed it enough for me to go ahead and terminate him at that time. Now, as far as what goes on between, from that point on, I found out later that he, later on in that day, he was arrested. And uh, now I, I guess it's in the hands of the court system and the uh, KSP. As for the Kentucky State Police, Bays was arrested and charged thus far with distributing obscene matter to a minor, sexual abuse in the third degree, and harassing communications. All charges are misdemeanors. He was also bonded out of the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center earlier this week with a court date yet to be set. It's the latest of what has turned out to be several situations in the past several months that have become very worrisome and even disturbing, of course, for parents of children, as well as the school system itself. Superintendent Helton saying that it's just something they simply can't tolerate and something that they are continually working to try to prevent. This type of behavior we can't tolerate because we're here to protect our students. And that that's my number one priority. I know that uh, individuals and students have rights, but when it comes to our students, we've got to do all we can to protect them. And, and like I said, I hate that something like this happens. You always would love to be able to prevent it, but you can't be afforded that opportunity all the time. But once you find out that something has taken place, then you need to react to it and deal with it. And I hope that's what the people understand, that I will deal with these types of situations. And, and uh, I'll be as fair and honest as I can with the individuals, but I won't tolerate this type of behavior. Helton considers one of the factors in situations like these, social media in and of itself, a wonderful tool, but also an avenue or pipeline for occurrences such as this. He says it's one of the several items that he is addressing when he plans to submit a revised and much more stringent school district policy in regards to communications or interaction between students and teachers via social media, as well as other areas of concern. He hopes to have that plan before the board by the 1st of December. While Bays awaits a court date, a date that has been set is that for a jury trial, 
set for two former McGoffin County School System employees, one being a former carpentry teacher, who were two of the three people arrested in May of this year, all three charged with five counts of unlawful transaction with a minor. The two male adults, as well as one female, were charged after a party was busted up by police at Wendell King's residence on Patrick Drive in Sagersville. Wendell King and Former carpentry teacher Daryl Peters are represented by attorney Ned Pillersdorf. He filed motions back earlier in August to try to have the case dismissed, but District Court Judge Dennis Prater has issued a motion in the case in which he denied that request, saying in part that the fact that the defendants are school employees is irrelevant. Responsible adults, however, would not have allowed these juveniles to illegally consume alcohol in their presence, particularly to the point that two of them required medical attention. A Facebook post of the party that night that was still ongoing was sent to the Kentucky State Police, Trooper Zach Haney and Josh Peace of the Sagersville Police Department. They went to the residence of Wendell King, broke up the party, Two juveniles were drunk to the point that they had to be taken to the hospital by ambulance, and five tested positive for alcohol, all ranging from 14 to 19 years of age. A third adult charged that night was Leah Van Hoos. She has a request for dismissal before the court that is still pending. As for the jury trial for Daryl Peters and Wendell King, it is set to take place after the first of the year on the 1st of February in McGoffin County Court. For high-speed internet starting at 15 meg for all of your gaming, movie, home, and business solutions, or to watch TV, including your favorite local channels, without a contract, with hundreds of channels, and digital and HD quality, and to stay connected 24-7 with friends and family, a direct line to 911, or to give your business the link it needs, choose telephone service you know is always there. Just click on their link on this site to find out how affordable the latest technology and communications can be. Foothills Communications. Well, I thought it was time for a little update on the Logan Corporation and their moving in, just as they said they would. They started moving in earlier this week, and just as I said I would, I wanted to be up there and catch a little video of the big trucks rolling in stock and equipment. And I also, while there, learned about the ribbon cutting ceremony they've got set, as well as another side of the business that I'm really excited about. Just like they promised when they got the keys to their new factory last week, Logan Corporation started in earnest this past Monday, moving in and setting up. And they have now officially set their date for their ribbon cutting ceremony, and they've even upped their scheduled start date. Everything started Monday, uh, and I've got four trucks, uh, one tractor trailer, three flatbeds that's hauling around the clock 24-7. And that will continue until we get everything over here, which will be in the next three weeks. And you guys have set a ribbon cutting ceremony, is that right? Yes, uh, the governor's actually coming in November the 4th for a ribbon cutting ceremony. Uh, it'll be at 2 p.m. And there'll be a pretty big show going on, I imagine. And we'll be uh, putting on the dog, so to speak. We're very excited. We've got a lot of stuff accomplished in what time we've been here this week. And there are, uh, guys that are bouncing back and forth between the shop that we're at in Martin County and the shop over here. And it's kind of uh, a different experience for us here uh, getting moved, but a lot of contractors that are already here, we've got uh, concrete being poured inside of the building for our machines. And uh, it is stressful, but it's, it's, uh, it'll all pay off in the end. A few other things to add in closing out this report, just for now, of course. Over the course of the weekend, Mr. Reisner had the honor of spending the first Logan dollar in Sagersville, stopping to get fuel. That will be the first of many dollars to be infused into our local economy as they bring their employees and then hire more. And also, I learned today about another side of the Logan Corporation. Not only will they be building and sending out those big, beautiful truck beds, but there's a retail side to this business steel and aluminum fabrication in which you can walk in purchase raw steel or metal or they'll even do and manufacture moderate to large projects for you if you need something of that nature done and to me that will be a wonderful asset locally too 
In regards to the retail or steel supply business, Reisner tells me they had a really big business going on in that nature several years ago when they were in their Prestonsburg location. But after they moved to the more isolated area of Martin County, that, that business just pretty much died off or waned. And they're looking very forward to coming to Sagersville and having the room and the location, mind you, to be able to get back into the retail business of having steel for sale, whether it's channel or just big sheets of steel, aluminum, what have you, you'll be able to purchase that, and I'm sure they'll have a large variety right here in Sagersville. And as I said, they'll also be fabricating uh, projects moderate to large and very large, I am sure, if you have any ideas or anything that you need made as well. And I was really excited to hear that. I think that'll be a wonderful asset to have uh, nearby, of course, and for the region as well. So good to know, very, very good to know. With that said, I'll tell you what, let me pause real quick. For a commercial message, I have got your community calendar announcements rendering. A few reminders, a few new things I need to tell you about as well, and other news to follow. Stay tuned. Let's go on over to our community calendar tonight, brought to you by McGoff and Farm Bureau. Starting off with a couple of birthday wishes, a happy six. Nope, that's the wrong one. This is his happy birthday, Courtney Hitchcock. Love, Mamaw Mary Sue, Mamaw Vivian, and your brother's happy birthday to Courtney Hitchcock. The next birthday is a happy sixth birthday, and it says, Happy birthday to Riley Addison Nicole Goble. Happy birthday, Riley. Rebecca Carter, Vivi, Mom and Dad, Robin Veronica. Happy, happy birthday to you, Riley. We hope you had the most special of birthdays. One last reminder about revival services at the head of Coon United Baptist Church tonight at 7, tomorrow and Sunday, same time, with Delbert Porter and Andrew Oliver. They hope that you'll join them. You know, all work and no play, you know the saying, well, that's why I didn't make it up there today to the Triple R weekend. And if you're planning on doing it, plan on having a good time. Turning ground started at 6 this evening. Didn't make it for that either. What a show. But tomorrow night, Terry Miller and the Bridge starts at 6. They've got another ride tomorrow, wagon and horseback ride set for tomorrow at 1. They'll have breakfast ready from 6 to 9.30 tomorrow. Lunch to be served uh, tomorrow as well from uh, beginning at noon, I think, and then dinner, 5 to 7.30. You can camp out under the stars, enjoy a wonderful fall, a weekend, hay rides, and much more tonight, tomorrow. Breakfast on Sunday morning as everyone's getting ready to pack up and head in. And a lot of fall-like events taking place this weekend. Tomorrow, for example, a fundraiser at the Middle Fork Fire Department. Drive on over from 1 to 6 anytime. They'll have a great, big, wonderful soup, bean dinner, and a gospel sing tomorrow. And if you happen to be 70 or over, doesn't cost you a dime to get in. All that fun and food's free. It's six bucks for everyone else. Don't forget about the Haunted Woods Trail on Lee Prater Street. That's the lower end of Sagersville. Tonight, tomorrow night, every Friday and Saturday night through October. Five bucks. Opens at dark. Come get your scare on. And their homecoming revival started today. Goes through next Wednesday, and that is at the Sagersville Free Will Baptist Church. They've got Pastor Todd Master there tonight through Sunday, I believe. And then next week, seven, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, they'll have Barry Clark from Betsy Lane Free Will Baptist. Services start at 7 nightly, except for Sunday, which is 6. They hope that you'll come and join them for a night of God's blessings. McGoffa County Safe Coalition, that Substance Abuse Free Environment Coalition, has their next regular meeting set for this Wednesday, 1 o'clock, in the McGoffa County Health Department, and everyone's invited to attend. A note that they've changed their regular date and time for the Water Into Wine Food Pantry distribution. It's been bumped up to the 26th. That's a week from this coming Wednesday, 8 to 3 as usual, with their usual break-in reorganizing during lunch from 11.30 to 12.30. But the Water Into Wine Food Pantry back in uh, distribution mode on the 26th. I'll remind you when it gets a bit closer. And our last reminder for tonight, how you can get birthdays and anniversaries and announcements on the program. Any of these means, or I'm dropping them off here at the newsroom on East Maple in Sagersville. Near term weather wise, you're looking at some moisture that could potentially, that being light moisture, pull into our area during the overnight. Don't think it's going to have the strength to do so. If it does, it will be barely noticeable and mostly gone by tomorrow. Even though we need the rain, it's not going to dampen any outdoor plans. So we'll chalk it up as a 20% chance of some, and I'll call it precipitation, hard to call it full-fledged rain tonight, and that diminishing to merely a chance of sprinkles early tomorrow. We will see 
We will see a cold front that's going to stay to the north thereafter, and that's going to allow high pressure to build in, and look what it does to our temperatures. So pretty much for your Saturday, partly sunny and 78. Uh, maybe a calm wind becoming south, southwest, maybe 5, 6 miles per hour in the afternoon. And partly clear and mostly nice on your Saturday evening. And the temperatures continue to build. Climbing up to around 80 on your Sunday. Low 50s for nighttime lows, but still mostly sunny, mostly clear, mostly nice any way you look at it. And watch and feel the 80s throughout your forecast period. But I'm going to tell you about something thereafter. First, 82, sunny, clear, Monday. 85, sunny, mostly clear, Tuesday. Wednesday, more 80-ish and 53, still mostly sunny, partly cloudy. After Wednesday, things start to get a little sketchy. We've got a major player weather-wise late next week. Right now, early estimates Thursday will fall to the low 70s. Friday, uh, the mid-60s, those are early estimates, and we could see, if we don't buy then, soon thereafter, some cold air and some rain, all setting up with a major change in the weather pattern uh, as we start to wind down October. Uh, those leaves might be coming down quickly after all and changing very quickly as well when all of this comes into play. We'll talk more about it next week. So all in all, a pretty nice weekend weather-wise and a whole lot of things going on. Whether you take in any or all of those, we hope you have a safe, wonderful, and joyous time. And whether you're just going to sit back and enjoy a little rest and relaxation, well, we hope you enjoy that too. And certainly, just as much, we hope you'll join us back here next Monday for more of your news today. Thanks and good night.